Hello everyone, Stepan here. I'll start off the series on the French defense with the, I would say, least fighting way for, for white to approach the French, to approach 1e6 by black, and that's the exchange variation, which is in chess, in fact, become a synonym for a boring opening, and many people will steer clear from people who play the exchange French and especially when you play for fun it's it's not it's not a good opening to face but because it often produces boring and drawish games unfortunately however there's still a lot of uh, fighting in that opening if you're not if you know what you're doing and especially uh, you can get hurt if you don't so it's important to know that variation if you play it with black and it might be a good surprise weapon for uh, pawn to e4 players uh, who face the french defense of course the opening starts after e4 uh, black plays e6, the French, d4, d5, and now uh, white doesn't play normally with knight to c3 or knight to, knight to d2 or the advance with pawn to e5, but he takes. We have e takes d5, e takes d5, and this is the uh, this is the starting position of the exchange French, French white one could say, and this is where the position starts to branch out. Firstly, I'm going to go over the most common uh, move for white and by far the most commonly played move, which is... I think uh, played more than 90% of the time and that's the move knight to f3 and now if you look at this structure uh, it's obvious that neither side really has anything in the position but on the other hand both sides have uh, a lot of open lines for the attack both sides have both their bishops opened up on the diagonals so both sides have a lot of attacking chances and uh, the queens are active, the knights can be activated easily and both kings could be in, a trouble, in trouble very fast if uh, either side isn't careful. And what the, the move knight to f3 does, it's preparing to enter the normal exchange French structure. Uh, I would just like to point out that if you are, that if you are lacking uh, knowledge in the basic theory of the French defense, I have made, the, made a separate video on the basics of the opening and the ideas for both sides. I will link it in the description below if you would like to check it out. And in this video we are go going to focus only on the exchange French. So the move knight to f3 is preparing the normal French exchange French structure and that's knight to f3 pawn to c3, solidifying d4, bishop to d3, bishop to e3, castles short, and that's it. The, bishop, the black bishop could go to f4 or to g5 as well, but most commonly and most passively it will go to e3. So white's main plan is to castle kingside as soon as possible, develop the rook to e1, develop the bishop to, to d3, the dark squared bishop can choose its post, and the knight from b1, most often in this variation, goes to d2, or almost always one could say, and its purpose is to support the f3 knight. So these are the main plans for white. Now, black could react, uh, I would say, in two ways, and there are only two active moves for black from this position, and uh, about the sidelines side on move 4 for white, we will go through them later. Now, uh, black will most commonly repl reply with knight to f6, uh, playing a symmetrical move, copying, uh, copying white, and now bishop to d3, bishop to d6, and both sides castle. And unfortunately, for the player with the white pieces, however he chose the opening himself, this is the position you are most likely to get from the exchange French. And as you can see, the position is completely symmetrical. The only minute advantage white has is the fact that he is a tempo up, or he can be a tempo up, he is, he is the one to play now, so he can choose what to do. But this position is what you will most commonly get. And the highest rated games from this position were Magnus Carlsen, Anish Giri, Svidler Anand, so very high rated games, so even the top super grandmasters choose these openings uh, sometimes. However, it's unclear whether uh, the player with white chose the opening to draw comfortably, uh, since he wanted a peaceful fast draw, or if they found some novelty which they didn't get to exploit. However, the fact remains that most of the highest, highest rated games ended in a draw, in fact more than 70% of the highest rated games from this position ended in a draw. But it, if you look at it logically, the pawn structure is completely symmetrical and it's not likely that it will change. White is going to solidify with c3, black is going to play c6, both sides are going to pin the knights and the position will remain completely symmetrical unless somebody voluntarily makes an imprecise move. And that's where thinking comes in into the, the exchange French and this is where your imagination can make 
a lot of impact on the result. So, deviating from the mainline theory in the exchange French can actually bring you a good result because most people who, who play the French defense or who play E4 know this variation uh, well enough to be able to get a drawn end game or a middle game. Of course, there's always a possibility of a blunder, but most likely it will be a draw. So you have to find ideas which are unconventional. First, I'm going to go through the main main line, and that's bishop to g5 pinning the knight, bishop to g4 once again symmetrical, knight bd2, knight bd7, both sides support their knights on f3 and f6 respectively in order to be able to play c3, queen c2, and black will do the same thing. So c3, c6, queen c2, queen c7, and there's even about 100 games from this position. Uh, the highest rated one, uh, just let me check, is Swidler Anand from 2016. So two super grandmasters have actually played this position. And it's clear what both sides are trying to do. And both positions are simply pressurizing the h7 and the h2 pawn. The bishop is indirectly attacking the h2 pawn because it's pinning the knight at the moment, it's because it's attacking the knight. But the knight on d2 is supporting that idea for the moment. And now from here, if you like to win, you have to do something crazy and you have to deviate from the symmetrical play. However, it's not easy because any deviation usually means an inaccuracy. So trying to do something out of the ordinary, and by ordinary I mean, let's say, rook to e1, rook e2, rook a to e1, doubling rooks on the e-file, uh, pushing a4, b4, a5, blocking down the queen side, playing h3, chasing the bishop away to h5, and trying to get some uh, kingside attack. This would be normal. However, the player with black will expect that and vice versa. So from this position on, and this is once again the position that you will most commonly get, you need to find an idea of your, of your own and try to deviate from the theory. Now, let me just go back uh, after knight to f3. There is a way for black to avoid entering the main line uh, theory of the exchange French immediately. And that's with a slightly imprecise move knight to c6. And this move is actually a very good idea because even though it uh, lets white keep his opening advantage, at least uh, the player with white will not expect this move. And this of course has a clear downside and that's the fact that the d5 pawn can no longer be supported by c6 because the knight is on c6. On the other hand, black has a few other advantages. First of all, he's developing a piece right at the beginning and he hasn't given up uh, uh, he hasn't told white uh, where his knight on g8 is going yet, so this is a, a big advantage. Now, white can continue in two uh, most common ways. The first one is most aggressively pinning the knight with bishop to b5. And from this position on, black should simply accept double pawns if white uh, would like to give up his bishop pair and play bishop to d6. And now you can already see that uh, an idea is brewing in, in black's camp and that there is a significant possibility that he is going to be castling queenside, which is... Uh, where your new unconventional imprecise ideas come in. And this is actually a good plan for black from here on. Let's say castles, knight to e7, c4, uh, this uh, black will have to take most probably, so d takes c4, bishop c4, and castles kingside. This is one way to play. But you could also, after uh, white castles, choose to play uh, bishop to d7, queen to e7 or even to f6 and then play knight to e7 and then castle long and this will give you great attacking ch attacking chances so let's say after white castles uh, first you develop your bishop to uh, to d7 unpinning uh, your knight and now uh, whatever white does let's say he continues with his normal plan of of c3 you can play queen to f6 because you haven't used up the square with your knight and after, let's say, bishop to e3, you can castle queenside. And now, uh, of course, white is quick in the attack with the moves such as b4, a4, a5, b5. However, your bishop pair is very strong on the diagonal, staring towards, uh, towards white king. Your knight can soon come into the game via e7, f5, or even h6, f5, or g4. And you, can f you could create a menacing attack if white isn't careful. So this is a great approach to the exchange French if you would like something different. Try playing knight to c6 instead of knight to f6 and try to give up the idea of playing c6 and passively defending your position. This could be a great way to, to approach the exchange, uh, defense, the exchange French defense players. Now, after knight to c6, white doesn't have to play uh, bishop to b5, the most aggressive move. He can play bishop to d3. And this is simply trying to get his own setup with c3, bishop e3, castle short, rook e1, queen to c2, 
and attacking the h7 pawn. However, if you try to avoid that, then the plan and white setup won't have as much purpose. Let's say you play bishop to g4, developing your bishop quickly with, let's say, with tempo pinning the knight, c3, white is continuing his plan, and now queen to f6 once again. You haven't used up the f6, the f6 square with your, knights, with your knight, so it's free for your queen. Now, of course, there's the threat of bishop f3, queen f3, queen f3, g f3, doubling up white's pawns, so white has to react with knight b to d2, and now you castle queenside. And this, uh, most likely, the player with white won't expect, and this could uh, bring a lot of excitement into the game. I will just show you one line I calculated up to a force draw for black. Of course, there could be much stronger attacking chances and this position, from this position on, you should put this on your board and try to find some ideas for black. Of course, it's a double-edged position, it's castling on opposite sides of the board, so there's attacking possibility, possibilities for both sides, but at least you can be sure that it won't be a draw. This is the line. Uh, I calculated white castles, bishop d6, pressuring uh, h2, b4, knight c to e7, you are moving in anticipation of the move b5, and you are also, most importantly, reinforcing the d5 pawn, queen b3 getting into the attack, knight to h6, and you can already see that both sides have attacking chances. If you ask the engines, white is only slightly better here, so it's definitely worth exploring, and it's not as if white has a decisive advantage because you decided to deviate from the mainline French uh, exchange French theory. A4, knight h to f5, h3, and this is uh, this is the sacrifice I calculated, and it's actually a forced draw, so if you are looking to draw a higher rated opponent who happens to play the exchange French, this might be a good line. Bishop h3, g h3, queen g6 check, king to h1, and now knight to g3 check. And this is, I think these are, these are great sacrifices, sacrificing two pieces for a forced draw, and of course uh, white has no other option but to accept the draw. After uh, fg3, g, uh, queen takes g3, of course now uh, rook to, uh, rook to uh, g1 would be almost checkmate, it wouldn't work, of course covering with uh, knight to h2 wouldn't work because the, the square is double attacked, so this would in fact be checkmate. So let's say queen to c2 trying to uh, defend after the knight moves, but now we have a perpetual. And at least that's a draw. But try to find your own uh, attacking uh, ideas after this position. And I think in most cases white is going to castle uh, kingside. You are going to play bishop to d6 and you can expect a, a queenside attack. So from here on you should find something for yourself. So remember that after the move knight to f3 you don't have to play knight to f6 going into the main line. Try knight to c6 and if white doesn't play aggressively with bishop to b5 and even if he does you can get this position with castling queenside. But if he plays bishop to d3 more passively then this position is very likely to happen if you wish it so. So this would be the main line and some ideas for black to deviate early on. Now let's get back here. After e takes d5, uh, of course knight to f3 is just the most uh, most common idea for white. He could also play bishop to d3 on move 4. Uh, most likely after bishop d6 this will transpose to the knight f3 lines. But after bishop to d6 white can also choose the move knight to e2. And this is a very significant move uh, even though it might not seem uh, too flashy. The point of this move is support to support the f4 square and to sort of be able to relieve the pin from the bishop on g4 by playing f3 in some positions. So let's say knight f6, castles, castles, knight b to c3. Now of course you don't have to play knight to d2, you don't have to support this knight, so this is another upside. Let's say rook e8, bishop to f4, because the square is uh, defended by the knight, you get to exchange uh, this very strong bishop. Bishop g4 pinning the knight, now queen to d2 unpinning, and knight to c6, and at least you can see that the position is different. So if you want to deviate from main line with white, knight to e2 on move 5, might be a very good way to do that. So starting with bishop to d3 and after bishop d6, knight to e2. If black plays knight to f6, you still play knight to e2 because he will have to play bishop to d6 at some point. After e takes d5, uh, another idea for white, which is uh, very interesting, is knight to c3. And this is completely going, um, steering away from the mainline theory and from the plan of playing c3, queen c2, knight to f3, castling short, etc. So from this position on, uh, knight to f6, h3, 
bishop to b4 would be played pinning the knight and now the same position that happened on the other side of the board uh, in the lines i showed previously you can now just ignore that play bishop to d3 and if black takes his he's very welcome to give up his bishop pair you would be simply better despite having doubled c pawns now black will most likely continue with c5 and after dc5 castles uh, bishop can take of course immediately after knight v2 bishop takes castles and you can see that black has an isolated queen spawn here the same as white had in the previous line so at least you have something different in the position your plans your plans have changed of course uh, black's bishop pair is very strong but the position is completely equal so this is just another idea to try to avoid the mainline theory now, after e takes d5, uh, the most unconventional way for, for white to play this line and the most unconventional way for, uh, for white to approach the exchange French is something similar, similar to the pan of Botvinnik attack in the Karo Khan, and that's the move c4. Of course, the position is not equal because this pawn would be here in the Karo Khan, so that's the problem, the c pawn would have been the e pawn. But after this position, Black has similar problems. Uh, he will continue the same way he does in the pan of uh, Botovnik attack with knight to f6 and after knight to c3, bishop to e7, knight to f3, castles. And now what black is waiting for with this pawn, of course white could take here but then he accepts an isolated queen's pawn. However, this is most likely to happen anyway because black is waiting for white to develop the bishop from, from f1 either to e2 or to d3 and to only then capture uh, on c4. So white will have to castle at some point. So after bishop to e2, now d takes c4 and bishop takes c4 and black has virtually stolen a tempo from white. And now after uh, bishop to g4 pinning the knight, bishop to e3 developing knight bd7, h3, bishop h5 and castles, once again you can see that you got something different from the position at least. Uh, in this position as well white has a slight edge and uh, it's nothing major, but gaining a bigger edge from the exchange French would have to include your opponent blundering and it's very hard to get an opening edge for either side. So. A very solid opening, not too many unconventional ideas. I would advise uh, the players with black to try to find some position, positions with castle and queen side to surprise your opponents. And the players with white, for the players with white, I would advise the move knight to c3 on move 4 and getting completely different positions than what the players with black are mostly used to. Okay, uh, this sums up uh, my presentation on the Exchange French. I hope you found it useful and I hope it will help e either if you are a black player who is having trouble with the Exchange French or if you are a player who plays E4 and would like to surprise your French defense playing uh, opponents. Okay, uh, thanks very much for watching and stay tuned for more chess. Thank you. Bye.